Ideas have consequences, sometimes good, sometimes bad, and sometimes catastrophic, like the ideas of Karl Marx. Born in Trier, Germany in 1818, Marx didn't invent communism, but it was on his ideas that Lenin and Stalin built the Soviet Union, Mao built communist China, and innumerable other tyrants, from the Kims in North Korea to the Castros in Cuba, built their communist regimes. Ultimately, those regimes and movements calling themselves Marxist murdered about 100 million people and enslaved more than a billion. Marx believed that workers, specifically those who did manual labor, were exploited by capitalists, the people who owned, as Marx put it, the means of production, specifically factories, but who did very little physical labor themselves. Only a workers' revolution, Marx wrote in Das Kapital, could correct this injustice. What would that revolution look like? Marx and his collaborator, Friedrich Engels, spelled it out point by point in the Communist Manifesto. It included the abolition of property and inheritance and the centralization of credit, communication, and transport in the hands of the state, and a lot more along the same lines. In other words, the state owns and controls pretty much everything. Welcome to the presentation of Karl Marx Attack the Fourth and the Ten Commandments, Social Justice 101. So we just saw in the introduction that Karl Marx was born in 1818. He didn't invent communism, but his ideas uh, got brought by Lenin and Stalin and Mao from communist China. And it's from his idea they built communism. Ultimately, those regime and movement calling themselves Marxists murdered about 100 million people and enslaved more than a billion. Marx believed that workers, specifically those who did manual labor, were exploited by capitalists. The people who own, as Marx put it, the means of production, specifically factories, but who did very little physical labor themselves. So we see here that Karl Marx believed that there was some exploitation in capitalism. So we'll define more and more as we go in this study. Marx and his collaborator, Frederick Engels, spelled out point by point in the Communist Manifesto, it includes the abolition of property and inheritance, the centralized of centralization of credit, communication, and transport in the hands of the state. Pretty much, that sounds like slavery. Because if your parents give you a property, they can take it back. If you receive goods from, from your family, they take it, take it back. They can control your communication and everything in the hands of the state. Is this tomorrow America under communism? This is America? I guess we're going to have a tomorrow war coming on the people of God. In the last great conflict of the controversy with Satan, those who are loyal to God will see every earthly support cut off because they refuse to break his law in obedience to the earthly powers. They will be forbidden to buy or sell. Desire of Ages 121. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name, Revelation 13, 16 to 17. So in parallel of the economic forum, let's see what they say. Welcome to 2030. I own nothing, have no privacy, and life has never been better. So you will actually be a slave. You won't own anything and everything will be controlled by the state. And this article, you can find it 
in November, uh, November 11, 2016. The Protestant Ethic and the Spirit of Capitalism How you think about the Protestant Reformation depends upon how you think about the initial split from the Catholic Church. The Protestant Reformation began in 1517 when Martin Luther posted his 95 Theses, a theological argument against papal authority and corruption. The Protestant Reformation led to a change in how individuals thought of themselves and how they worked in society leading to the rise of capitalism. Whether you believe the Protestant Reformation was a fragmentation of the church or a proper critique of it, it is one of the most influential movements in Western culture. Max Weber, a German economist, wrote about the effects of Protestantism in his book, The Protestant Ethic and the Spirit of Capitalism. According to Weber, the Protestant work ethic encouraged individuals to work hard and accumulate wealth as a way to display their own faith and salvation and as a way to fulfill their duty to society and the world. In contrast to religious devotion, that took individuals away from society, Weber argued that Protestantism formed a robust engagement with society that eventually led to the energy and creativity needed for the rise of capitalism. Capitalism requires creative energy and individual commitment, values emphasized by the Protestant work ethic. This led to an ennobling of all kinds of labor has been dignified when done in praise of God resulting in a diligent engagement of work in the capitalist market. So we see here, Marx Weber is expressing the good side of capitalism because capitalism gives you freedom. Remember in the Dark Ages, the papacy used to control the population and with indulgence, force it forcing them of worshiping Mary and statues and indulgence, all these things was, was happening. So when they came out from the Reformation with Martin Luther with the 95 Theses, what happened is that they needed independence. They needed to work hard to, so they can keep their independence and their free speech. But when you have money, usually as a Christian, when you receive Christ, your next good deed is to share what you receive from Christ. And that's why God expressed it in Matthew 25, 14 to 30. He had a parable about interest. God gave talents to different workers. One five, one three, and one one. But the last one took his talent underground. So when Christ came back, that was the expression from Christ. Thou was therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and that at my coming I should have received my own with usury, meaning interest. So God, when he gives us talent, it's a form of capitalism that we have to diversify and increase so we can also share with others. Every work you do in this world is for somebody else. It's not for you. But when you lose sight of God, you keep everything for yourself and you give capitalism a bad name. But capitalism is not bad out of itself. Popular capitalism, which is the economic expression of liberty, is proving a much more attractive means for diffusing power in our society. Socialists cry power to the people and raise the clenched fist as they say it. We all know what they really mean, power over people, power to the state. To, you, to us conservatives, popular capitalism means what it says, power through ownership, to the man and woman in the street, given confidently with an open hand. There are many who urge with great enthusiasm that all men should have an equal share in the temporal blessings of God, but this was not the purpose of the Creator. 
A diversity of condition is one of the means by which God designs to prove and develop character. Yet he intends that those who have worldly possessions shall regard themselves merely as stewards of his goods, as entrusted with means to be employed for the benefit of the suffering and the needy. So we see here Margaret Thatcher express what socialism is. You give power to the people, but at the end, power goes to the state because when there's abuse, there's anarchy and anarchy brings the military. And after, people have no rights because they have to be subject to the state to behave. So when you have capitalism and you share what you have, you keep your independence and you have an open hand, not a clenched fist. And in the little quote we just read, in Patriots and Prophet, page 535 paragraph 2 diversity of condition is one of the means which God designed to prove and develop character so if everybody stay at the same level there's no incentive to work harder or to develop your character because everybody getting the same pay so God allowed ranks different position so you can achieve and get better at your craft Marks could not find any evidence to suggest that capitalism, the free exchange of goods and services through private owned business, was a passing phase. Marx really had no interest in proving his theory. He knew that they could be put into practice only by brute force. So now we're going to enter in 1844. In 1844 is an important date in this world because something happened in that day or in that year and there's a controversy about this day because many things came during that day. Remember if you read Daniel 8 14 and he said unto me unto 2,300 days then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. So in Daniel 7, we will see how the sanctuary was cleansed. It was a transition from the holy to the most holy place. So the father was sitting on the side of the north at the table of shewbread, if you've been following our channel about the sanctuary, and he was going to judge on the west, on the, on the side of the Ark of the Covenant, so he had to move. And his son followed him right after. And if you didn't understand this concept, you can watch Jesus or, or Barnabas, the last social justice presentation we did. So I beheld this, the throne were cast down, the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool his throne was like a fiery flame i'm gonna jump one like the son of man came with the cloud of heaven and came to the ancient of days so the father moved first and the son moved first and when you go to the most holy place is judgment there is judgment happening there just like the yom kippur the day of atonement and you can read that in Leviticus 16. And today we have a plot against 1844, but a lot of producer take stuff from the Bible and put it in movies and discredit 1844 stuff from the Bible. We have here Professor X, Xavier. Xavier sound like savior. So here we have Professor X sitting on the chair and he's moving in his space with that chair. Just like Christ, um, the Father, the Ancient of Days, with the wheel of fire, the throne. The throne was movable. That's why when you get to the Ark of the Covenant on top of it, it's called the Mercy Seat. That's the throne that's movable. So let's read what happened in 1844. 
Marxism. In August of 1844, Karl Marx and Frederick Engels met in Paris and started a lifelong association. On November 19, 1844, Engels wrote to, Mer to Marx, we are at a present holding public meetings all over the place to set up societies for the advancement of the workers. By a huge majority, everything Christian was banned from the rules. The criticism of religion is the prerequisite of all criticism, and we are working for the abolition of religion and for the real, for real happiness. Atheism, evolution. In the same year, 1844, Charles Darwin wrote the first draft of The Origin of Species, and so it's out to all his colleagues for evaluation. How much of the world has taught Trodden into that cesspool. God almost certainly does not exist. So we see here those two theory were brought in 1844. Had the Sabbath always been sacredly observed, there could never have been an atheist or an idolater. Because if you keep the Sabbath, you will be remembering who created this world. And that's what was in the Ark of the Covenant, the fourth commandment also. So now we're going to see Karl Marx was also interested in nature. These two strands of ecological analysis, Heckel's notions of ecology and Liebig's and Marx's concept of a metabolic relationship between society and nature, evolved during the late 19th and early 20th century. Beginning in the 1880s, the leading British zoology, E. Ray Lancaster, Charles Darwin, and Thomas Huxley's protege, and Marx's close friend, put forward a strong ecological critique of capitalism and of the Victorian concept of progress. So we see here a trio between Charles Darwin, Thomas Huxley, and Karl Marx. So they're getting together to come against capitalism with the ecological critics of capitalism. So in the Sabbath is a sign of mercy from bondage. You can read the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20, but there's a in Deuteronomy, there's a recap of these Ten Commandments in Deuteronomy 5. And in number uh, 14 to 15, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy maidservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy ox, thy asses, or thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gate. That my maidservant, thy maidservant may rest as well as thou. And remember that I was a servant in the land of Egypt. So I'm just going to jump. Therefore the land, therefore the Lord thy God command thee to keep the Sabbath day. So the same way God delivered the people out of Egypt, he want us to, to, uh, to extend mercy to our neighbor out of their sin or out of their situation. So justice and mercy are the basis of Jesus and the Father's throne. So mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Psalms 85, 10. So now we're gonna do a little recap on the sanctuary. Here is the holy and the most holy place. 3180 Jesus resurrected and went to the holy place. And he was officiating in the holy place. Seven candlestick, if you read Revelation 1, you'll see, according to the article, where he was. And in 1844, he went to the most holy place to do the second phase, how to redeem us. So the outer court, he died on earth, on the brazen altar, and he entered the, the holy place and he went to the most holy place. So now the side of the north was vacant. 
So that's where Satan wants to sit. I will exalt my throne above the star. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation on the sides of the north. How he's going to do that? Because on the table of showbread, there's two stack of bread of 12 of six and six. That's me. Uh, it's a total of 12 representing the 12 tribe, representing the people of God, just like Jesus had 12 disciples. But there was one who rebelled, just Judas Iscariot. And Lucifer, that's where he rebelled against Christ. So he wanted to sit on the side of the north over the congregation. That's where they meet. That's where they had church. So what Satan did, he moved the candlestick on the south side, the seventh candlestick, because that's where the Holy Spirit carries the will of Jesus and the Father to us with the angels. So he moved the candlestick on the side of the north so he can be three in one body, three faces in one. He wants to play God. He wants to be like God on the side of the north. But we know Satan doesn't have the Holy Spirit and he lost it when he was kicked out of heaven. So he wants to play the king of the north. So that's why he had to get six feet. If you read, if you see the 666 presentation, six feet to the throne in our channel, you will understand better what he did with the throne of Solomon, six steps to get back to the throne and sit on the side of the north. But the father and the son was sitting there. So you're gonna have three on the throne. You only have two on the throne and and, and one before the throne, the Holy Spirit. So it's important that you can read that in Revelation 1, 4, Revelation 4 and 5. The Spirit, the seventh Spirit of God is always before the throne. So that's why we don't worship the Holy Spirit. We receive the Holy Spirit as the third person. It's a person that, that will guide us into all truth. So it's a re-education on the side of the north. So you heard about social distancing when you sit is a one you see that person is sitting it's one when there's no one in the middle is zero and when there's an, another person sitting it's a one it's 101 you have heard 101 in your class for math for french or for psychology it's a form of education but today there's a false education happening to destroy god out of our life and to change our mindset into a battle against God. When Satan became disaffected in heaven, he did not lay his complaint before God and Christ, but he went among the angel who taught him perfect and represented that God had done him injustice and preferring Christ to himself. So the first social justice movement was in heaven because he went to the angel to re-educate them, to get on his side, to go against God. That's a social, it's engineered. It's not mercy and justice from God. So how did Karl Marx got there? He got trained by practicing Buddhism. It is a question of a spirit which created itself out of nothing. Hence, it has a question of nothing which out of nothing made itself spirit. I don't even understand what he was saying, but how did he got there? Karl Marx was not a Buddhist in any conventional sense and as far as can be ascertained, never personally encountered any form of ethic Buddhism on his travels around Europe. His connection with Buddhist philosophy, however, stemmed from his lifelong friendship in association with Karl Popen, one of the recognized and early European academic experts upon the subject of early Buddhism and Tibetan Buddhism. As Marx had met Copen at university, it is logical to assume that this is where he, Marx, first encountered a Western academic interpretation of that Asian philosophy and religion. Karl Copen, of course, made available in German translation the central teachings of Buddhism, which probably involved extracts of the Buddhist priest's logic, 
which was made available to Marx in 1861. Five years later, Marx informs Antoinette Phillips that he has been keeping his mind in a state of nothingness in accordance with the Buddhist teachings. So even though Karl Marx wasn't a Buddhist, he was practicing. So they call that spiritual exercise, spiritual formation, putting his mind in a state of nothingness for the spirit to talk to him. This is where he got Satan to talk to him to bring all this type of philosophy in the world. Those who knew him most intimately consistently described him in demonic terms. His son wrote to him as my dear devil. His father suggested that he was governed by a demon. And Engels referred to him as a monster of 10,000 devils. He had the devil's view of the world and the devil's malignity. Sometimes he seemed to know that he was accomplishing works of evil. Thus, heaven I've forfeited. I know it full well, he wrote in a poem in 1837, a decade before his manifesto. My soul, once true to God, is chosen for hell. That certainly seemed to be the perverse destiny for Marx's ideology, which consigned to death over 100 million souls in the 20th century alone. So we see here, he had the devil's view of the world. So that's why he was able to bring all these false teaching into the world to bring this world into anarchy or bondage. And we see other players, movie stars, actors, athletes, practicing this mindfulness of nothingness, like to empty their mind so the spirit can come in. God to say to meditate on the word, not to empty our mind. So they empty their mind and their spirit, Satan comes in, or demons comes in to guide them and to perform well at their craft. But at the same time, they will have the same view of Karl Marx at the end of time. So we see here LeBron James practicing mindfulness meditation. And he had an app called calm, to meditate, to be in a state of mindfulness. And we see athletes today are trained most likely by a guy called George Mumford, the mindful athlete secret of the pure performance. So you see people from Boston College meditating on the floor, the secret weapon of CEO and basketball pros to get in the zone. So everybody's practicing some kind of meditation to be open to the spirit that's coming. Some people practice yoga. That's why yoga is so popular everywhere. Martial arts, Buddhism, uh, any type of things. And in a church, they're praying to the spirit. In the Bible, you never see any passage people praying to the Holy Spirit. We receive the Holy Spirit. God said, if you love me, keep my commandment and I will send you another comforter. That's when the Holy Spirit received order to come and to guide you into all truth. No one ever speak to the Holy Spirit. We speak to Jesus and Jesus send the Holy Spirit and the Spirit guide us into all truth. But when you pray to the Spirit without accepting the sacrifice of Christ, you put your mind in, in a state of nothingness for demons to talk to you and to be possessed by Satan. Who came with this practice? Loyola, spiritual formation, putting in direct communication with the spirit. He received vision and presumed that God had granted him peace. It's more probable, however, that he was hallucinating. He was praying to Mary. After an accident, he stayed in his room and pray and pray and pray and spirit started to give him instruction. And that's what happened to most people. And Pope Francis, Pope Francis in La Dato Si, the Green New Deal, in 2019, tell people to practice the same exercise. These communities, Francis made clear, include our seminaries and houses of formation. 
which can provide not only spiritual formation, but education in responsible simplicity of life, in grateful contemplation of God's world, and in concern for the needs of the poor and protection of the environment. This means that religious instructions must work to help people cultivate spiritual foundation that makes ecological conversion possible. So we see here that not only when they practice spiritual formation, it's going to also lead them to practice ecology, ecological conversion. So now they're going to start worshiping nature instead of the Creator. Here we don't see he's pointing people to the Bible, but to spiritual exercise. And he mentioned the schools, the families, the media, catechism, and elsewhere. And we have here Jay-Z. He called himself Jehovah, Jehovah Z. So he wants to fulfill this plan also as an entertainer. So the entertaining company founded by the rapper is starting an imprint with random house called Rock Lit. Just like I told you, Satan moved the candlestick on the side of the north, but if if it's him that's moving, changing the sanctuary, it equals zero, even though he puts a seat. And that's why Jay-Z called his company, a, a random house, 101, rock lit. It's a false light. You hear the youth today say, get lit, but it's a false light. The only light you can get is from Jesus that will give you the Holy Spirit. And you see many books here, Holy Spirit 101, Spiritual Direction 101, Trinity 101, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. What's the problem with the Trinity? You can bypass Jesus and the Father and pray directly to the Spirit. And that's why you're going to hear more and more. You can have more um, direction or instruction in our channel on the previous subject. So we see here spiritual discipline, contemplative prayer, uh, Christian meditation by monk, by priest, and we see here even in, in the occult, they have the 101 in that skateboard. So we're not inventing this. And even in Walt Disney, 101, the nation, the, the series that was way back is coming back. And we had that Lady Cruel, Cruel of the Ville, a character known as one of the most vicious villains in Walt Disney. So she's on the side of the North, 101, re-education. So all these things, I, I cannot get into all the details, but we see here the two stack of bread on the table of shoe bread and the candlestick move and gives place to the sun god. And people worship the god three in one. So you have 101. My object in life is to dethrone God and destroy capitalism, Karl Marx said. Wherever Marx's idea were practiced, life got worse. Not by a little, by a lot. There is not a single exception to this rule. Not in the Soviet Union, not Eastern Europe, not China, not North Korea, not Vietnam, not Cuba, not Venezuela not Bolivia, not Zimbabwe. Wherever Marxism goes, economy collapse, terror and famine follow. So it a cataclysmic failure, meaning terrible human suffering, is the inevitable legacy of Marxism. So why do so many people, and now especially the young people, defend it? They're gonna lose their right. Why did they defend it? They're being educated by the media. They're being trained by the entertainment industry, by the news channel, by the app. So we see here Jay-Z again, rap is poetry. And we see here Bart Simpson, step off mom, right? Rap is the poetry of the streets. So I had to dig a little bit deeper about poetry in the Bible. So once I was reading Acts 17, 28, for in him we live and move and have our being as a certain also of your own poets. 
have said, for we are also his, his offspring. So we see here Paul preaching to the Greek about salvation, but he was trying to point to their philosophers that they trying to find God, their poet. But what, and I decided to search the word poets, what it really means. It's a maker, it's a producer, it's an author, it's a doer, it's a performer. The most important thing, one who obeys and fulfills the law. Only one person fulfilled the law is Jesus Christ. And that's why he said, if you love me, keep my commandment. He became the law in flesh. He obeyed perfectly to be the second Adam to redeem us. So today, people want to do their justice, but they're not doers of the law. They're doers of the law of flesh. You see here, they have their own justice. We have the athlete like Colin Kaepernick raising the fist. We have Justin Bieber closing his eye, giving homage to Lucifer, the third eye. So we see the dove behind him, the false light people will receive, a false justice, when they will say peace and safety, and sudden destruction will come upon them. So we see all this in different religion that's not pointing to Jesus Christ that can save them from their sin. So we see here Colin Kaepernick raising his fist and have one knee representing the swastika. The swastika was also a symbol of, let's say, prosperity, blessing, spiritually in Indian religion, including Hinduism and Buddhism and Jainism. But when you lift the right arm, you symbolize, you're symbolizing by worshiping the sun. And if you live lift the left arm you worship in Kali so we see here they setting us up with symbols so we can worship the Sun so democratic socialism where everything is free except you so Sun worship again Rome salute had a little to do with the current symbol of gesture, the salute and the, and the stretched hand, the gesture is probably associated with the solar cult. By extending the hands up, homage was paid to the sun god. So remember the Roman Empire was the Iron Kingdom, the fist. So again, we see the fist, we see the salute and is giving homage to the sun. So what's the battle with the sun? Because Jesus is also called the son of righteousness. Arise with healing wings. So we know Jesus is the light also. So he created the sun on the fourth day. So he's brighter than the sun, but he's giving us example for us today that he's like the son of righteousness. When you have the sun, you're happy. So. If you read Acts 26, 13, when Paul was in the road of Damascus, he got hit by the Lord and the Lord, the Lord stopped him. In the midday of King, I saw in the way of light from heaven above the brightness of the sun. Above the brightness of the sun. So he's greater than the sun. So that's how he got stopped. And when Christ sent the light, he has sent the Holy Spirit also to us. So he was in the heaven, but he sent it to Paul. But Satan wants to take the same symbol of a false image on the side of the north, Ezekiel 8.3. And he wants us to turn back. He wants us to turn back from the sanctuary to go outside of the sanctuary, from the most holy place, to go back to worshiping the sun from the east in Ezekiel 8.16. So another way they control the youth and the adult is the news. They like to give us one side of the story. That's fake news. 
So remember George Floyd was killed by police brutality? There was another guy called Tony Tempa killed by police brutality after the policeman had 13 minutes knee on his back above his lungs and they were joking that he passed after. So you never heard about Tony Tempa, you only heard about George Floyd to bring the race war between people, black, Asian, so the gospel cannot be preached to all nations. And that's why Revelation 14, 6 to 12 wants to bring all nations to Christ, but Satan wants to divide and conquer just like he did in heaven to bring a false justice. So the breaking news we are getting more and more is like communism, a one side of the story. So we see here they also do magazine, Rolling Stone. We see here, Kadir Nelson did uh, the race fist of a woman and a boy, comparing it to the French Revolution. So what's coming in America and throughout the world? Communism, socialism, and it will bring anarchy. So it will be controlled by the state, by the army, to control the people. So they're pushing all this narrative on TV so they can be war and killing and controlling the masses. So now we're going to get into a deeper subject with Karl Marx. We just saw before that he started to be interested in ecology, but he had a deeper sense of that because he was led by Satan. Marx's concept of the universal metabolism of nature, the social metabolism, and the metabolic rift have proven invaluable for modeling the complex relation between social productive systems, particularly capitalism and the larger ecological system in which they are embedded. This approach to the human social relation to nature, deeply interwoven with Marx's critique of capitalist class society, give historical materialism a unique perspective on the contemporary ecological crisis and the challenge of transition. All progress in capitalistic agriculture is a progress in the art, not only of robbing the labor, but of robbing the soil. All progress in increasing the fertility of the soil for a given time is a progress towards ruining the lasting sources of that fertility. So we see here, he started to be interested in nature without giving homage to the creator who created nature, but he want to control it and share it so it can last. We know we're not going to live here as Christian. If you know we're going to spend a thousand years in heaven, you can read that in Revelation 20, verse maybe one, one, two, three, and four. So Satan knew that his time is short. So he's giving Karl Marx these ideas so he can work for Satan and make people think they're going to stay here forever by saving this planet. No one wants to destroy this planet. If you're a true Christian or true human, you don't want to destroy this planet. But we know with this chaos and all these things that's happening this earth cannot last forever but he wants us to believe we can stay here who was the first communist is lucifer because remember when he took the garden and this planet out of the hands of adam and eve he said and he was tempting christ this is what he said in luke 4 6 and the devil said unto him all this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whosoever I will give it. So, he got it from Adam and Eve. He has all the capital in his hand now. Now he wants to be a communist and share it. So if you worship me, you can get a piece of it. So he was tempting Jesus to bow down to him. So we, we need to understand that. And when you have capitalism, that's mean you have a kingdom. You, you are the center, just like a capital. It's like a crown, a crowning city. 
So he wants to remove the crown of your property, of your self-governing uh, power that Christ gave you, the freedom that Christ gave you, and he wants to give it back to the enemy so the enemy can control all of us. So what, what we see here, that Karl Marx was interested in nature to control nature also. Karl Marx and climate change, Marx and nature. What Karl Marx has to say about today's envir environmental problems, Marxism and ecology. And who's interested in about nature? The papacy. The climate is a common good belonging to all and meant for all. All existing social condition that religion, family, and personal possession, freedom, and democracy, they all had to go in order to achieve Marx's vision of a earthly paradise. He wants to stay here, just like a lot of Eastern religion, the papacy, they don't talk about going to heaven. You're going to stay here 1,000 year of 1,000 years of peace on earth. So they have to create a social justice system to make you believe that now there's justice, but it's just going to bring more chaos. So we see here Green Sabbath Network, La Dato Si, on the care of a common home, Fratelli Tutti, social friendship, Green New Deal, Greta Thunberg, and even making COVID vaccine a global common good. In the face of political discord and self-interest, we have an obligation to promote unity, peace, and a common good in society in the Catholic Church. So the Catholic Church is taking the reign of the subject right now of common good. So this is in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, section 2188, seeking recognition of Sunday. If a country, legislation, or other reason require work on Sunday, the day should nevertheless be live as the day of our deliverance, which let us share in this festal gathering, this assembly, of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven. So we see here in the Catechism, they want to bring Sunday back and remove the Sabbath day. So did Karl Marx have the same idea in his Manifesto of Communism in 1848? Yes. Marx believed that if all property were owned in common and each member of society had an equal share, that it would prevent the division of society into, into two classes. Said that the common good could be attained by all individuals seeking their personal interests. Karl Marx's system provided for equality among individuals. So we see here equality, common good, just like the papacy is saying today is the same social justice everywhere. So Karl Marx and the papacy are closely linked. And that's why they want to bring the new Sabbath. So the Sabbath that was there is being trampled on for a new Sabbath, a new normal. Celebrating of Sunday Eucharist is the sign of the new everlasting covenant of Christian. Many Catholics do not know why they must attend Sunday Mass under pain of committing grave sin. It's not even in the Bible. You will find no text from the Bible calling us to worship Sunday. Even though Christ resurrected on Sunday, he may never change the day of the Sabbath. So they use the tricking people to focus on his resurrection, to switch the day and to worship the sun into spiritual exercise and formation. They're forming the mind of people to believe in that without the Bible. So what did the Pope say about communism? Pope says, it is communists who thinks like Christian. And what the Catholic Cardinals say? Karl Marx is a source of the Catholic social teaching. So they're learning 
also from Karl Marx. Karl Marx went to a Jesuit school. It's the same thing. He got taught by them and they act like they don't like communism, but Pope is saying clearly it is a communist who thinks like Christians. So democracy is the road to socialism, Karl Marx said, and the goal of socialism is communism by Vladimir Lenin. So the transition is happening from socialism and from socialism to communism. And that's why Joe Biden says democracy prevail. Democracies have ever been spectacles of turbulence and contention, have ever been found incompatible with personal security or the rights of property, and have in general been, a short, been as short in their lives as they have been violent in their deaths. So James Madison, Federalist number 10, father of the Constitution, said democracy have been a spectacle of turbulence and contention. That sounds like anarchy. So if we're going back and leaving capitalism for socialism, we will have anarchy pretty soon. So what's gonna happen to true Christian that keep following the Bible? It will be declared that men are offending God by the violation of the Sunday Sabbath, that this is sin has brought calamities which will not cease until Sunday observance shall be strictly enforced. And that those who present the claims of the fourth commandment, thus destroying reverence for Sunday, are troublers of the people, preventing their restoration to divine favor and temporal prosperity. By uniting with the world and partaking of its spirit, they have come to view matters in nearly the same light. And when the test is brought, they are prepared to choose the easy, popular side. Men of talent and pleasing address who once rejoiced in the truth employ their powers to deceive and mislead souls. So we see here, if you accept the common good, you're gonna accept the new Sabbath. But if you don't accept the new Sabbath, the Sunday Sabbath, you will be called a troubler of the people and you will be against that temporal prosperity on this earth. So by accepting Karl Marx and socialism and communism, you are take, you're partaking in of the same spirit, the same view, and you will force the vaccine, you will force Sunday, you will force, force all these ideology that will destroy our privacy, our love for each other into a system of slavery. So this is where you find in the Ten Commandment. The subject was the fourth and the Ten Commandment. So if you accept Jesus, you will keep the Sabbath day because God created everything in six day and he rested on the seventh day. That's when you find the signature of, of nature. He's the one, he's the author, he's the creator. So if you worship him and he forgive your sin. Not only was a son of creation, but also restoration. Eventually, you receive, at your baptism, you receive the Holy Spirit, an endowment. And if you continue in his way, you will receive a double portion of his spirit, a final seal, just like the seven candlestick, the fullness of the Holy Spirit representing Christ in you. It's so important to understand that. And after that, when you have love, you will share with your neighbor. You will not steal from your neighbor, but you will have hospitality. And in the, the Ten Commandments, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, wife, male servant, his female servant, his ox, his donkey, anything that is your neighbor. But with Karl Marx, he wants to repossess the fourth commandment and whatever belongs to you. That's putting his, his brother and sister in slavery. God gave us liberty through Jesus. The thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. 
I am come that you may have life and that they might have it more abundantly. John 10.10 10. And this is why in Isaiah 65.21-22, God says, They shall build houses and habit them, and they shall plant vineyard and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. So God's going to give us free will to plant and to build. Nobody's going to come and steal your possession for common good. So it's not even biblical. God wants us to share with our neighbor. The first four commandments is to love God. And the last six is our neighbor. As soon as you love God, you should love your neighbor. If you don't love your neighbor, you don't love God. So that's why God is a gentleman. He, even him, even though he created us, he doesn't force himself on us. He said, remember the Sabbath day. And the Sunday law will say, we will force you to keep it. So you see the difference? So you will get the mark of the beast and the other one will get the mark of Christ. You will have the seal of the Father on your forehead. So it's really important. And how we, what we get is the Holy Spirit abiding with us forever. God will not give his Holy Spirit if we're still in sin. The book of nature and written word shed light upon each other. So nature is associated with all this because God created all these things for us. And that's why Abraham, when he saw these three men coming close to him, he had hospitality because he was following the true God. He was following all the precepts all the commandments of God and those three men were angel so sometimes we see people in the street they might be angel if we need to help a homeless and everything because when you receive rest you receive love to share with others and Lot had the same spirit even though they separated he went to Sodom he had hospitality he did the same thing and that's why the angels still save him out of this wicked city when you have hospitality you will wear a crown of sacrifice they shall see his face and his name shall be in their forehead so when you have hospitality that's when you have love let brotherly love continue be not forgetful to entertain stranger and thereby some have entertained angel unaware you will receive messages to have warning if something's gonna happen in your life angel will warn you because God wants to protect you. And to finish, remember Christ will take possession of this earth again so we can have freedom because the real communist is Satan using Karl Marx, Lenin, Stalin, the papacy. He's playing behind scene. Thou shalt not more be uh, termed forsaken, neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate, but thou shalt be called Ebzibah, and thy land Beulah, for the Lord delight in thee, and thy land shall be married, Isaiah 62, 4. So God's going to marry the land, he's going to give us back. And I shall, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more, see Revelation 21, 1. When we love the world as he loved it, then for us his mission is accomplished and are fitted for heaven and we have heaven in our heart. This is the presentation today. I hope you understand you need to love your neighbor, not stealing from your neighbor. And don't get into Karl Marx's ideology of, of, of stealing from people and repossessing everything and don't even credit God as the creator. Once again, remember, Christ is in the midst. Thank you for watching.